for hi, anybody who doesn't know. Can you say hi? <laughs> no, that's not hi. You gotta use your words. How oh, old are you, Reese? Oh. How old are you? Four. How old are you? Four. Three. Three. <laughs> uh, we can answer serious questions, I promise. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I was telling uh, Amanda that I've got a one and a half year old daughter at home. So oh, you get it then. She looks like some of the old Reese videos. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, that was back when you just learned how to walk, right? Well, we're, off and, we're off and running now. Yeah, now now we're speedy. I think we just kind of usually open these things with uh, keys to the game for each yeah. team for you. Yeah, so I, I think for Georgia, it's just more of the same. I mean, they've been so solid and obviously people talk about sometimes the lack of explosive plays for them and things like that just maybe having more success in the red zone but I think we're nitpicking a team that is obviously deserving of the number one ranking so it's it's staying the course which is hard to do especially against an opponent like LSU uh, for LSU I think takeaways maybe even some trick plays some things to catch Georgia off guard which is going to be hard to do because not much catches them off guard they're so well coached they're so disciplined they're so prepared for these big moments and along those lines for LSU my other key would be just don't get to out of whack because of the moment I mean this is huge and, and we all know this having covered this game but it's one of these games that feels almost like a college football playoff game, no matter what the implications are. And so I think the stage can be really big, and um, LSU needs to not get too wrapped up in that for sure. What do, you, wanna, yeah, go ahead, what do you need to see from Stetson Bennett in this game? The last couple weeks he's been, I guess it's all relative, but a little bit shakier than maybe he looked to start the season. Yeah, you know, Stetson Bennett, I think, needs to get back to being a little bit more of a game manager. And I hate to say that because I think part of – his strength is being able to create and do some things. But I think at times this season, especially, he's felt like, all right, I need to just do something, put the team on my back, you know, make a big play and all of that. And, and I get that, right? When you know you're capable of it and when you've won a national championship before and been on a championship run, you, you kind of think, yeah, sure, I should be able to do that. But I think for him, you know, it is more about just being a little bit more careful with the football and making those decisions that put his team in the best position. Um, and, and listen, like Stetson Bennett, has continued to exceed expectations, and people have doubted him Mama, every step of the way. Mama, look. What? Mama, look, a bush. Oh, a bush. Yeah, that's a bush. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Um, so, you know, it, finding ways to embrace the almost normalcy of just being a quarterback who manages the offense, I think will put him in a great great uh, position for success in this game, especially against some defensive players like Harold Perkins that are gonna be licking their chops against him. Lauren, what impresses you the most about what Georgia has accomplished to this point? I mean, I think it starts with Kirby Smart. And we were saying this last week on SEC Nation, like we're not giving Kirby Smart enough credit. All the conversation's been around Saban and Alabama's not in the playoff and all this. And it's like Kirby Smart's quietly over here becoming the dominant force from a coaching standpoint in the country, but also in the SEC. And it's not to diminish anything that Saban and Alabama's done and you know, some of these other coaches, but we need to give some more credit to Kirby and, and what he's built. I, I think it's more the consistency. I mean, how many of us said, well, Georgia will be okay this year, but they lost all those players to the draft. And I, I was in the room when they were all drafted and I'm looking around thinking every single Georgia player has been drafted. What are they gonna even look like this year? And then uh, they have found ways to just have success that I think goes back to not only being a team that's bought in, but also the coaching. So I think it's the consistency and maintaining of success that really deserves a ton of credit this year. Laura, the SEC championship has been a special game for a long time. And yet, for the second straight year, it's not really necessarily a ticket to the playoff. You know, Georgia's yeah. probably in no matter what. And in the 12-team playoff world, you wonder about how much that's even going to evolve even further. How do you keep this still remaining kind of a special football game? Yeah, so um, it's interesting because obviously we were all a little disappointed when uh, LSU lost. We thought, man, you know, what? Okay, hey, shh, I'm answering a question, okay? <laughs> You're doing great, though. Doing I'm awesome. really proud of you, Reese. Um, so, you know, obviously there would be more luster to it, right, if, if LSU was still in the mix. But I still think there's something amazing about winning an SEC championship. And I was even just looking over some of the numbers and where Georgia ranks against other teams when it comes to winning this game. And it's just rare to win it, right? There's not that many teams that can even say they've consistently been in it. And so it's funny because not to keep bringing up Nick Saban, but he has consistently – yeah, okay, bye-bye. It's been real, Reese. Thank you. Good luck uh, making sound bites out of this. 
No, no, I'm still doing something. Go over there, baby. I love you. <laughs> All right, you stay down there. So, <laughs> I think, you know, when one of the things he's always said is that winning an SEC championship mattered to them a ton. And I believe him because I do think there's so much to be proud of. This conference is by far the best and most competitive conference in the entire country. So to say that you were the champion of it means a lot. You've been around SEC country. Kind of reaction of Brian Kelly, his first year, seemed like it wasn't a culture fit, right? And then all yeah. of a sudden they went oh to the West. Like, I, right. I, we're, we're all like, anybody who said that, and I think we're all a little guilty of it, right? It, it didn't feel like the guy was going to, you know, come in and have this success. And um, I, I just think he's proven a lot of us wrong. I, I'm really interested to see what happens in this game and the coaching decisions that he's made because I think one of the things that you know, really he'll be known for this year is making some aggressive decisions. You think of, you know, going for two against Alabama. I mean, that's what, you know, ended up <laughs> winning the game, obviously, in yeah. overtime. And had that not worked out, what would the conversation be, right? But either way, it did. And I think he's shown a great belief in his players and development of players in during a season, which is incredibly hard to do. Um, and, you know, the culture fits when you win. So <laughs> if he can continue to win, Golly, I mean, if they win this game, you're talking about a guy that's going to be anointed from the get-go. But especially with what he was working with there, I don't know that people totally understood how bare the cupboards had gotten in a lot of ways. And uh, it's pretty impressive to see what he's built in a short period of time. Anything else? Appreciate your Thank time, you guys Grace. for... <laughs>